Okay. You know, I'm back from vacation and I've got my new backgrounds for those of you guys who watch on YouTube. <laughs> uh, you know, I've got my patriotic Rushmore. I've got some great sunsets from some lakes. I was catching fish in. And uh, Skip is still recovering from uh, being social at uh, a uh, uh, yeah. yeah that, that, <laughs> it did take it did take a week. Yeah, yeah uh, you know I'm still like recovering from vacation, right? I'm like I, it's really hard to get up in the morning, get going, <laughs> get the things to do, and like geez, yeah, I'm vacation from vacation. But I'm going out camping again this weekend. So oh no, oh no, <laughs> a mini recovery session. Yeah, I'm gonna need another recovery session. It's summer, right? Yeah. So. You know, today I thought we would talk about customer loyalty and what does it actually mean? And I wanted to be a little, we've talked about this a bit in previous podcasts where we say care about what your customer cares about, not Mm -hmm. what you care about. And what we mean by that is like, you know, we hear technical people say all the time, like, oh, I, I need to do this meeting with them so I can tell them all the things we're doing. Yeah. And and I know this for a lot of your long-time listeners, it sounds like a broken record, but we really wanted to get this out there of like, what is a person across the table from you passionate about? What do they care about? And are you feeding into that? Are you helping them with that? Yeah. So that when you're doing your job, whatever it is, um, whether you're a grocery store, store clerk or you are a high-powered executive at a financial firm, what is it the person across from you cares about and then help yeah. them achieve that. And if you can do that, the best person comes low because you became a part of their life story. That's Think right. about the people who mean something to you in your life. Ask yourself why. Then look at your customer base. Look at your favorite customers. Uh-huh. Why are you willing to work more with them than with other customers? What is it that's different? Like, well, they're not jerks to me. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's more, it's more than that. Do you right. feel appreciated by them? Do they treat you well? No. Um, you know, are they listening to you? Okay, that makes you feel good. But are you listening to them? Are you yeah. doing things for them in the yeah. same way? Or are you just telling them what to do? Well, and I, I go back to the employee role and is I've had quite a few conversations about this, obviously with the you know event last week and just kind of in this zone. But um, if you look at the managed service providers business model, right? We got started in this model because companies were growing, they were using technology more, but you had small companies that could not afford a full time IT person. It just didn't make sense or a little bit bigger companies that they didn't want to. They had other objectives they wanted to focus on. And so this entire model was, hey, we will be a fractional employee. Hire us, you get the benefits of the whole team, you know, all all that. But if you think about that, how many times do you have some kind of friction with an employee when you're trying to do something that is really important to you, probably really important to the job, and I mean, your, your company and you have a fellow coworker that you could really use some help on and they go, that's not my job. You know, that, uh, that I'm not supposed to. I mean, you're, you're running to get some sort of, you know, insane deadline. This is the deal that's going to, you know, make the company more business or this is going to keep the you know company from going out of business, whatever it is. You know, it's this really important deal and it's an all hands on deck and you get those, you know, one or two employees that go. No, I, I'm. it's not my job. It's not what I was hired to do. And they don't feel like they're a part of the team. Right? Is your IT team working with your clients in that same manner? Right? When, when your team shows up and goes, hey, we're just here to take care of the blinky lights. I don't want to hear about anything else. I don't care about anything else. I'm being a bit extreme here, I admit. But, you know, that attitude uh, around the other things that are important to them is going to create that friction. Yeah. So uh, explain all that to, you know, now if we flip that over and think about the opposite, you know, when you're there to say, hey, what can I help with? Anything. All right. Now we are going to put technology, that is going to be our drive, but they're going to see you as a valuable employee, essentially. And that's, that's that idea and that philosophy that you can't script out. 
I mean, there are there are scripts and there are SOPs that we put together for so many different things. But that's why Adam, I talk about this so much. This is something that you have to learn and understand and buy into, and and, and you know preach this within your organization. But you, you can't put it into an SOP. It has to be part of the way you think about things so that you get the value out of this. Yeah, and uh, the, the SOP, like standard operating, you're right. Yep, you, yep. It's standard. There's no uniqueness yep. to that. That's okay. That's what you're expected to do. I'm expected to clean the floors in my house. You know, I'm expected to do my laundry. And then every once in a while, Andrew does my laundry for me. I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting, we just got back from vacation. So the laundry monster is massive. Oh. Right. And I'm sitting here, oh, I got to get this done. You know, it's starting to pile up. It's getting bigger than my bed, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> all that stuff. And like, I just can't bring myself to do it. I've got to <laughs> do. I want to relax. And then uh, all of a sudden I wake up in this morning and there's everything's done. I'm like, yeah. well, that's nice. And I think about that with your clients. Yeah. And, and, you know, what have you done for them where they think, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That, that loyalty, the little touches, you know. That you do that. I know in the corporate world, I could swap out somebody's computer and no one would care. But if I swapped out their monitor and their keyboard, yeah, I was a freaking hero. Yeah. <laughs> and it could have been the same exact keyboard they had before, just new, clean, clean, <laughs> clean right? Yeah. It's the dumbest thing, right? But that got me like emails back. Oh, thank you so much for the new computer. I'm like, oh, I just gave you a new monitor and keyboard. You were due, and they're like. Oh, well, still, it has run so much better. <laughs> I'm like, <Yep>. okay. <laughs> but, you know, perceived value, right? We talk about that yes. all the time. Mm-hmm. When you look at the person across the table from you, are you delivering to them something that's going to make them loyal? Things that make people loyal. Let's talk about this really quick. When you look, and I asked early on in this conversation, what, what are your loyal people? Who are you more beholden to amongst your customers, amongst your employees. And they're usually people who have either done something for you, um, helped you with something, or even they just have a great personality and they're willing to hang out with you. Hey, I go out with beers with Sally every every Thursday and we've got a great, great repertoire. And I know I can count on her to help me in projects. She saved my yep. bacon a couple of times when I was on vacation. Yep. That makes loyalty. Why? Because time spent on things that helped your life become easier. Sally came and I was able to vent with to her over a pint every Thursday. That's a, that regular meeting. That's your cadence, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you have the time she covered for you when you were out of office with a sick kid or you were on vacation. And she that project you completely forgot about, she took off your table. Yeah. Did something to make your life easier. And now you're like, I owe her. There's that, there's that, that chip. Some people use the, the concept of chips. Mm-hmm. You have, you have, you have these poker chips in your hand. How many of them are you giving to people and how many are you taking from people? Yeah, that's it. And so with your clients, you're walking in the door and you have this perception that you have this pile of chips and they have a perception that they have a pile of chips mm-hmm. and you think you keep throwing chips at them. But they're the wrong. They're the wrong value. That's they're right. The wrong, they're no good at that casino. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. But they're not giving you any because they don't see any reason to give you a chip. They don't see any reason to do you a favor. Mm-hmm. They're giving you money. And so this becomes completely transactional. I give you money, you fix my stuff. I give you money, you fix my stuff. Mm-hmm. That's that's not loyalty. That's just a business transaction. You you can be yeah. replaced by anybody, right? For yeah. every job, like I can give go, less money to somebody else and they can fix my stuff. So I'll yeah. go do that. You know, think about my entry level employees, right? Mm-hmm. You come in and you're getting paid minimum wage or figure fifteen dollars an hour, and um, you have no uniqueness. You're just filling a seat, making calls, or just making um, widgets, stamping them mm-hmm. out. You can be replaced by anybody. Mm-hmm. Now, take that same $15 an hour employee, and they come in, and they do their job, and they help uh, volunteer to clean the break room. Anything. 
And yeah. they do something else. They go above and beyond. And that person starts getting noticed because mm-hmm. they're not just a $15 an hour employee. They're somebody who you can rely on, somebody who's working hard, who's doing you favors and helping your business grow. And now I'm willing to identify them when they come into a, an interview for a, a pay raise or a job increase. I'm willing to listen to them like, oh, yeah, we really do value you. You do all this extra stuff for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not overextending. You get a great work-life balance. Um, let's reward you for that and give you more responsibility. Yep. Your client will look at you the same way. Hey, you're doing all these things for us, but you really came through for us when we did that remote install uh, yeah. for that employee. Or you really came through for us when we were stuck at that trade show and could not get our point of sale system working. You came through for us. Right. And then you, you tell them, hey, if we upgrade and we do this thing, it'll make all the stuff move smoother. They're more willing to listen to you, just like you're more willing to listen to that employee who went the extra mile to solve your problems. Yeah. And in that sort of, you know, pay, you know, compensation deal uh, as an employer, you know, you're offering, you know, more more salary or, or wages. Uh, it is obviously a little bit different in a business relationship, but it, it is fundamentally the same thing. So when you're going above and beyond, and it's not necessarily above and beyond your contract, all right, it's you're going above and beyond in your relationship, all right, and in working towards their goals. And so it's not like you have to take on a huge amount of work. I want to set those expectations. You know, you don't need another team member, you know, uh, you don't need to, you know, book over time for everybody's, you know, so it can be loyal, all right? No, this is just something that you do along the way. But as you do that, you know, when it comes up time for that contract to renew, that's when you, you know, say, hey, we've got a price increase, all right? And and you you build that in there and your clients look at them and go, hey, these people are really loyal to me. That They really help us out. I am willing to pay this price increase. It's worth it. I see the value in what we're getting. And it is exactly opposite of what I hear so many MSPs and how their conversations are going. Those price increase conversations are hard and it, it they're, they're doing all they can to maintain. All right? Too many times they go the other direction. The client's like, nope, you know, uh, you they don't feel the loyalty and they're like, I want a discount. You know, I, I you know, I can I somebody else told me they could do it cheaper. You need to match this price over here. And those are the struggles that. I hear again, so many people going through and some of them are going to happen. All right? uh, I'll set expectations there. I mean, this is no silver bullet, but you can drastically change most of those conversations by focusing on what your client really cares about. Yep. Loyalty is innately a tied to relationships. <clears throat> and if you build those, <clears throat> excuse me, if you build those relationships, you're going to see people are like when a, a competitor even comes in and they say, mm-hmm. oh, we can do this for $10 a seat cheaper. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's great. But we really like working with Bob. Yes. So I, I, I had a, um, an organ <laughs> pest control, right? This is a great mm-hmm. loyalty story. Uh, the guy's name was Scott and he would come in. We would chit chat and it was great. And then I would have the door to door, the the, the, mm-hmm. the door bangers every June when college gets out and they come in and they're trying to get their numbers. That's yeah. great. I, I appreciate the hustle. I will always talk to them, give them feedback. <laughs> and like, well, we can do it for cheaper. We can do it better. And we can do this and this and this. And like, who do you have right now? I'm like, well, we've worked. Oh, well, we do this better than Orkin. We do that better than Orkin. Like, yeah, but I really like Scott. Yeah. And even though it was cheaper and supposedly better, they had a great yeah. pitch. I like Scott. I, I stayed with them. Yeah. And that is how it goes. And, you know, you, you also got to be careful in your organization that your your clients don't become loyal to a single person. <laughs> yes. Oh, that is really important. Actually. Yeah. Yes. That's <laughs> a, that's a that real deal. Person becomes you guys think, OK, do I need to make them a partner in my company now? Because they've got <laughs> like 20 of my biggest customers and they can walk out the door anytime. Yeah. And. You want to make sure that happens because we have people come back like they'll leave an MSP and they'll go to another MSP like, oh, we love working with your product. And yeah. they'll call us back up and say, hey, let's get this demo going with my team so that we can 
do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're really excited, but they bring us with them. Your customers will, are, who are loyal, who have reached that loyalty status, will tell their friends at their next BNI meeting, yeah, I work mm -hmm. with, you know, MSPA, and I really, really enjoy working with Mike. I really, really enjoy working with Bob. Uh, they'll really take care of you, and they listen to you. They're a little bit more expensive, but that's okay. Yeah. And then uh, those BNI people are like, oh, yeah, let me talk to them. Yeah, they, they do. And, and on that loyalty. Yes. And the, I, I hear again, you know, many MSPs, they're talking about price and competition. You know, uh, your, your costs are going up. You know, there's, you know, more security solutions that you have to buy, that you have to do internally. I, I get all this. Cost is, is hard, but I have seen it firsthand and through many of our members as well. You can sit down with clients you can put a proposal across the table knowing knowing full well that you're the most expensive solution that they're looking at and walk away with that business. Yep. Right? Uh, it, it's the value that you bring and it's outside of the technology. It, it's outside of the bits and the bytes and the pretty charts and graphs. It, it is what your client feels that you can help them accomplish. And yeah. that is that is the most important thing. Are you helping them reach their goals as a business? Mm -hmm. And this also works, just to wrap this up, I know uh, we're coming up with time here. This works with your employees as well, right? Yeah. And your team members. You have to donate time to them. You have to do things for them and with them that matter that build their relationship. And it may not be something you even care about. We talked about how some people don't care if the dishes are dirty or not. Some people really yep. care about that. Yep. You got to find out what your fellow employees or your coworkers care about. Yep. <clears throat> you got that one employee, maybe you got a little bit more of an abrasive relationship with. Maybe that's because you need to dump some chips into that pile. That's true. And turn that relationship around. Um, you know, maybe you're in a little bit of a deficit there, or maybe they're just a jerk. And you don't know why. <laughs> and, you know, you got to kind of like work it out. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm constantly trying to fix relationships because I always wreck things. I say the wrong thing or I do the wrong thing. And I've, I've gotten really good at repairing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I tell my kids that mm -hmm. as well. You got to learn to give time to other people in a meaningful way so that they're willing to give time back. And mm -hmm. there's some chips in the pile. And if you understand like the love languages or any kind of the Enneagram books, yeah. um, you're going to have an easier time of this as you're able to speak the language that they want. Maybe their thing is they just want to go out for a beer on a Thursday. They're lonely. They're, they're new to town or they're young and they're just getting started in a career. They need to socialize. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's somebody who's really struggling with a certain technology. They want to they want to move from being a technician into being an admin. They don't know how that path works. Mm -hmm. Spend some time talking to them on about your path and how, how you got there. Um, help them out with a ticket or two that are that they're struggling with. Pop by and say, hey, you got any tickets I can help you with? Uh, you know, I'm trying to like keep my keep my memory sharp. And so if I can sit down and help you with some tickets, that'd be great. Like, oh man, I've been stuck in this one PowerShell, you know, for like an hour now. I mean, yeah. You want to think about PowerShell? All of a sudden, you've got a new friend. You <laughs> there <know>? you go. <laughs> in there, like where yeah. somebody's stuck on a PowerShell issue. And I go, well, what's that over there? And they're like, oh, I didn't see that. And now I've got a well, friend. Yeah, now I, they come to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on that. So um, as, as director of ops for many years, you know, my job was to hire, you know, engineers. And I, on so many occasions, we had opportunity to hire really, really good engineers. We, we built an amazing team. And uh, I was continually impressed with the quality, I mean, the high, high quality of engineers that we were able to hire away from large corporate environments yep. that had way bigger budgets and, you know, much longer, longer list of, you know, employee benefits than we did. And they would come to work for us for essentially less money because they liked what we did. 
you yeah. know, th- there was a real value there and our team environment and the exciting stuff we got to work on. You know, we're nerds, right? We like this stuff, man. So, you know, that ability to develop a relationship and, and many of our in- engineers had connected with them. And so they, they came over because of the relationships that were there. So it's not all about money with both your employees and your clients. It's about the relationships and the loyalty that you can build. Yeah. And you can't just build loyalty all the time by being the lowest price or being the fastest ticket holder or t- fastest ticket processing. It's, it's again, it's what Skip and I've talked about this whole time. Like, whether it's your employee, your coworkers, or your clients, it's about building relationships with them that matter from their perspective, not from yours, from their perspective. And when you can do that, then you're going to get those loyal customers that never, ever leave. Is that what is it? The golden rule is uh, be kind and the platinum rules treat others how they want to be treated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So anyways, I love this conversation. This has been great. Uh, we are heading into the summer here. Uh, it's going to get crazy with with schedules and we're. We're going to be going into the conference season in the fall. And man, quarter three is looking like it's picking up people. Uh, quarter That's two right. is a little bit down from an econ- economic standpoint, but quarter three is looking like it's picking up. So everybody needs to brace themselves um, and uh, try to pick up on those loyalty features, especially when you're doing your sales calls and you're doing your quarterly meetings or your annual meetings coming up here. Yeah. And that way you can build that loyalty for everyone. Cool. Thank you, Skip, and we'll see you next week. See ya.